So I was in Manchester and I had been going to the temple regularly. Uh, Tribhubanath was very powerful for making devotees join the temple. So uh, what happened was they had a temple in the house and the landlady came on the long day and they were having a stand-up kirtan on the first floor so she gave them a month's notice. So all the barometries and the books and everything that went with the temple moved into our flat. <laughs> and then a month later we got thrown out. <laughs> so then I came down in a van with many, many people actually and we all joined the manor five days after George Harrison had given it. So that was very exciting. It was like moving into Krishna's village. So after I'd been here just a couple of months, Srila Prabhupada came and stayed for two and a half months. And that was very amazing. And that was when he arrived in the helicopter. And he came actually over the roof here and he landed on that back lawn. Apparently he didn't like it at all, the helicopter ride. It made him feel very ill. <coughs> but it was very amazing because I had just joined a few months. And then I was realizing, well, I saw this person, you know, a year or so ago, and he was very amazing. But what if I don't feel the same when I see him again now? So we were actually where the deities are now downstairs. That was the deities weren't there then because Prabhupada hadn't installed them. So it was actually open to the garden, like French windows. So we were all standing on the steps and we were singing when Prabhupada came down. We were singing, we're going home back to Godhead. Oh, we're all going home back to Godhead. And we were singing. Papa came over the top and he waved like this. So then he landed on the lawn. And I was thinking, well, I'm dancing because everybody else is dancing. But what will I feel like when I see him? But when Papa got out of that helicopter, it was very amazing. And for many years I didn't say these things because I thought they would think I was a hudgy or something. But other people who were there, I heard them say it. So now I say, when Prabhupada got out of that helicopter, it was just incredible. Because he had like a halo, you could say, the whole way down to the bottom. And his feet were not touching the floor. And other people saw that. He was walking above the ground. It was very amazing. I never saw it before and I never saw it afterwards. But it, it was just, and I, I knew, whew, I don't need to worry that I won't feel the same. I just saw this definitely as a really unusual person, completely from another planet, actually has come here to give us these amazing message and amazing methodology that we can perfect our lives. So that was also very amazing for me. <laughs> I left London, I went up to Manchester for a while, and Tribhuvanath was in charge of the temple up there. Actually different people, but mainly him. He was very close to Srila Prabhupada. Every time I saw him in the room with Srila Prabhupada, doing Kirtan, I don't know if you know him, he was quite famous. He used to play the drum with his leg going. Every time I saw him at Berry Place, Prabhupada would go and pat him on the head because he was so young, he was much younger than me, but he was so, actually, had so much energy and love for Krishna. And he actually would cry cleaning the floor because it was God's floor. So when I met him, he told me, and I didn't realize at the time it was the same person that I had already met before. He told me about this man who came from the kingdom of God because I was a Christian, uh, to tell us what God wanted us to do on a daily basis. And I was like, wow, that is amazing. And of course, I didn't realize it was the Prabhupada I'd met at that point. But I really took it in. And I just told him, tell me what to do. I was working and everything. So he told me, you know, you have to get up this time. You have to go to bed at that time. You have to do this in this order in the bathroom. So every single thing I could do, I tried to do in small ways, just small, small, small things. And I was meditating nonstop. This person that he told me about has told me what God wants and that if God's pleased, he'll let me go back to that spiritual world. Because when I was young, my dad had told me, God's a person who lives on another planet and if you're a good girl, you go and live with him when you die. <laughs> so this was very significant for me that this man had come from the kingdom of God. And so I actually followed, even though I was working, I really tried second to second to second as an experiment. And I have to say that I got the most amazing, deep, deep, incredible realizations that are my foundation to this day. Mm -hmm. So that was 
Prabhupada from a distance, just meditating on this amazing person who came. So, yeah. <laughs> so one time, when Prabhupada was here in the manor at that time, people would go on the morning walks. And um, one morning I was going to go on the morning walk, and it was raining, and I hadn't actually put a coat or shoes on. <laughs> I was a little, oh, I'm going on the morning walk with Papa. <laughs> so Papa came down the stairs, and I was waiting in the manor, in the temple room. Papa came by, and when he stood by me, how we knew I was going on the morning walk, <laughs> you know, he stood right in front of me, with his face like this to mine, and he said, you are going on the morning walk? And I said, yes, Srila Prabhupada. And he said, you are not properly dressed. So I was amazed by that. It just made me realize how um, he came with such a big mission for the whole world. But still, even on the small, seemingly small things, he was so not just caring, but he noticed everything about everyone. And then he gave personally, you know, so, yeah. So when I came up the stairs, Prabhupada had already gone up to take rest. I was so devastated. So I went downstairs and I had rounds to do. And we were busy in the temple, so I knew I had to chant my rounds, but I was crying. And I was really crying. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I was crying and crying. And Shruta Kirti, who was his servant, then came down. And he said, oh, why are you crying? I said, I so wanted to hear Srila Prabhupada, but actually he's gone, and I think he was going straight after that, and, and now I can't hear him. So Shruta Kirti, being very sweet as he was, he said, oh, you're like the gopis crying, I'll go and tell Prabhupada, do you want to see him? And I said, oh, no, 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 I'm too nervous, please. <laughs> so he went upstairs, and then he came down afterwards, and he said, Prabhupada wants to see you. <laughs> so I was like, oh, no. So anyway, I went up there with big bleary face and I went into the room and um, I paid my obeisances and then Prabhupada asked my name and I said my name and then Prabhupada said something but I couldn't tell what he said. I said what? And then Prabhupada he just circled round and in that room there was a mattress on the floor and Prabhupada was sleeping on that mattress and uh, so he came around and he lay on the mattress a bit like you know, like this, with his elbow up and his feet up. And then I was just facing him like this, looking at him. And then he said, thank you very much. Well, I was so shocked when he said that. I thought, why is he thanking me? You know, I, I presumed, because I would think I was the only girl on Sankton at that time from that place. But I thought, why is he thanking me? So that, I said, no, 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 thank you for everything you've given us, you know. A very simple exchange, but then I went out. And then Shruta Kirti came, and he said to me, Prabhupada just said something about you. And I was seeing how Prabhupada was so grateful for whatever little service we did, that Prabhupada actually said to Shruta Kirti, he came out and told me, she's a great sage, Krishna will bless her. So that is very amazing, that he would be so kind to say that. You know, the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and the kindness. So I want to say that our Srila Prabhupada actually did give everything, completely. So sometimes devotees quote things that were said in the 60s as to what we should and shouldn't do, maybe about going a little deeper, perhaps going towards looking at Raganuga Bhakti and what does it mean. Uh, so for younger devotees, Definitely, you know, that is not appropriate. But for older devotees, um, many of my god brothers and god sisters have already left their body. I'm 70 years old. Prabhupada said, Work hard now, Samadhi later. And in Srila Prabhupada's books, when we look in Chaitanya Charitamrita, he actually gives all the information what to do if we want to go that step further. He tells us to read Brihad Bhagavatamrita. He tells us to read Ujvala Nilamani. He mentions actually um, the Tenth Canto commentaries of the previous Acharyas and the Six Goswami's books. So I feel that Prabhupada wanted to give us this. He did give everything. You know, sometimes um, it's like we think we can't have progressed, but Prabhupada was so potent. 
he had the ability, even after leaving the planet, to move us forward, to be able to go to that full depth that he wanted to take us back home to Godhead. So I just wanted to say that this is our Papad's true glory. He did give us everything. Um. Jai Anilo, Prachu. <laughs>